Okay, so this is the module 5 entitled uh, Implementing a Public Key Infrastructure. So in this, mo in this module, we are to tackle PKI uh, and also we look into digital certificate and uh, components inside the PKI like certificate authorities, registration authority, and, um, and others. Uh, when we talk about PKI, uh, it, this is an entire system of hardware, software, policies, procedures, and people. Main agenda of the PKI is to create, distribute, manage, store, and rev revoke digital certificates. Okay, so usually our websites uses PKI, but not only website. Okay, but we can also see PKI infrastructure in an email or even in remote in remote access, remote computers. So it's encompassing. It's a very wider. Uh, it's an infrastructure, okay? So, um, it includes users, computers, servers, and encryption, okay? Usually, what we see in PKI are public key, okay? Asymmetric, as we call it. Um, so, we cannot say that if you have a public key encryption, that is already a PKI. But, for sure, that in the PKI, it has public keys. Okay, there is a creation of asymmetric key pairs in a PKI. There is a public key and a private key. And then take note again, we've discussed in the last module that again, private keys are kept secret while public keys are the ones being distributed. Okay. Uh, one key component in the PKI is the issuance of the digital certificate. Okay. So in the digital certificate, uh, this is an electronic document that binds the public key with the user's identity. The agenda of the digital, digital certificate is to ensure okay, the uh, identity or, or owner of the public key. Because take note, public key is distributed. It's open to the public. That's how it is. So um, it is vulnerable to attack. So a means to ensure that let's say if let's say a browser receives a public key it is indeed let's say that browser came from ma mapua.blackboard.com uh, digital certificate in its process it ensures that indeed that came from uh, mapua.blackboard.com in a digital certificate uh, when you click example in the chrome there's that padlock symbol if you click that you will see their details in the digital you will see the details inside the digital certificate um, there's also an activity we had in the email, <coughs> securing email transactions. There's that part where you are to explore the digital certificate. Uh, contain, uh, contents inside the digital certificate includes, uh, say, signature algorithm, the hash algorithm, where the digital certificate is issued, okay, issued somewhere below, and then the issuer, the CA, certificate authority, and then there's that validity period for certificate authorities, okay. Uh, usually, digital certificate uh, conforms to standards. Standards of digital digital certificate is under X.509. Again, uh, we've learned in Cisco that standards, it ensures interoperability among vendors. That to say, uh, if there is a web server in Linux, the browser is in uh, Windows. Okay, So, um, the process behind digital certificate from a Linux web server to a Windows on the client side, uh, will work. Uh, that is the agenda of these standards like X.509. Aside from X.509, there's also a standard under digital, certif digital certificate we call as uh, public key cryptography standards. So again, usual content inside the digital certificate is the version. It has a serial number. This is the unique identity of the certificate within the domain of its certificate authority. The signature, the digital signature, okay, the algorithm used by the CA to sign the certificate, the issuer, the name of the certificate authority. I have an example here. Oh. Example in here, the certificate authority is the Amazon, and then the validity period, the public key, okay, and then extensions. So, CA, what is a CA? A CA is the, the one that issues certificate to the user. Okay, it may be eternal or but uh, but most of the time it's a um, it the CA is a trusted third party. It's a company, let's say a very sign, um, which which is owned by Symantec or like on the, in the previous slide, the Amazon. Okay, so CA is responsible for verifying the identity of the recipient of the certificate. Okay, 
So again, uh, we usually see digital certificate in uh, in websites, in our browser. If you open the browser, it connects to a secure site. So the browser will first check the certificate. Okay. Uh, let's say if it, um, we, wherein that certificate comes from a certificate authority. Okay. So the one that issues the certificate is the certificate authority. So also the certificate authority is the one that manages the 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 connection to the servers and the key okay it's the use of the certificate authority so i have here a sample of a, a screenshot actually of a digital certificate issued to paypal and it's ca is semantic okay it says here very sign the owner nowadays of very sign is semantic okay so again ca is a third party that negotiates the security of the connection between the browser to the website and um, usually for a user to obtain the digital certificate first thing to need uh, first thing will have will happen is to initiate a csr we call a csr csr it stands for certificate signing request it contains the user's identity and then the public key okay uh, i have a, ah another uh, in here on this part our browser recognizes lists of ca okay uh, it has this list of certificate authorities it recognized. Okay, it's under here in this tab, Trusted Root Certification Authority. Again, the CA is the one that issues digital certificate. Okay, issues public key certificates. Also, it distributes the certificate authority. It, it distributes the certifi the the certificates, uh, published certificates. Um, there are instances a certificate may be revoked, maybe it's compromised, maybe it's lost or damaged, or take note we there's certificates has this validity period and when it is when it expires or exceeds on the validity period, usually these certificates are being revoked. So the one that revokes this certificate is also the CA. So all of, encompassing is the CA is the one that money maintains the security availability and continuity of the uh, certificate issue once. Uh, at the first start of the, uh, say as a client, say example Mapua, ano, Mapua, let's say Mapua Blackboard will use or implement a digital certificate. First thing will happen is the registration. So in the registration, this is the process where the end users, say Mapua, the admin of Mapua uh, for the Blackboard, MapuaBlackboard.com will have to create an account within with the CA, with the certificate authority to become authorized uh as requester of the certificate okay the one that handles this registration is the registration authority this is the one used to verify request for certificates and if the request is deemed valid so the ra shall the registration authority shall inform the ca to issue the certificate to mapua okay so ra might also be used the registration authority may also be used if the organization deals with several certificate authorities okay ra is of obviously seen on top of the hierarchical structure first uh, the process starts with the ra okay uh, so other duties of the registration authority is uh, it identify and authenticate the subscriber obtains the public key from the subscriber verify the subscribers uh, that the subscriber possesses the private key corresponding to the public key submitted for certification. So, if a client will request for a digital certificate, okay, it is to be sent to the certificate authority. And then, what the certificate authority will do, okay, after, it, after it's done its process, it will issue a digital certificate which contains this where we discussed in the previous slide it will it is to be sent on the requestor okay uh, like in this case in the client and then this digital certificate will now be every time that let's say it will have an, an transaction it will have this transaction to its partner it is to be always it, it is to be forwarded every time that there's a transaction it's to be forwarded with its transaction partner Again, I mentioned a while ago that browsers has pre-configured list of certificate authorities. So, a CSR, a certificate signing request. So, usually a certificate signing request is a message sent from the applicant to certificate to CA 
uh, in order to apply for a digital identity certificate. So this is uh, so every time it, it happens during the registration, okay. And in here it contains the public key for which the certificate should be issued, uh, and then it identifies information such as domain name and integrity protection. Uh, format usually for CSR is under PKCS number ten, okay. Uh, so usually ang CR, the CR is uh, being uh, set up in a server, okay, uh, in a server. So I have here, I have attached here a list on uh, the usual instructions for these different types of servers to generate a CSR, okay, a certificate signing request for the SSL digital certificate. If you click this, you will see a detail on how to set up a CSR in a Microsoft IIS. Usually in a CSR, it contains the name, uh, the domain name of the server, the business name, department, city, country, and the email ad. Okay. Uh, we have different formats, file type actually of uh, digital certificates. Um, the very common format is the PEM. It's a base 64 encoded ASCII file. Okay. Um, usually it's in it, it is in a .pem file extension, but if you see a .crt or .cer or .key extension, it may be uh, a .pem also. Okay. You'll know if it's a .pem if you open the Notepad like in here, and then you will see a begin and end uh, certificate. Okay. If you see a begin certificate and an end certificate statement. So that is, that is uh, a PEM file format. Okay. Other format is the P12 PFX. Uh, it's a binary format based on PKCS number 12, and usually it's used for uh, storing server certificate or intermediate certificate or private key. And then we also have uh, a file format for uh, which is uh, the that PFX uh, file, this, which is, can also be developed by combining the private key, which, which is uh, that P7B file. Usually, this is done in my, uh, Windows IIS, in Internet Information Service. Okay. Uh, usually, you see this in a single sign-on certificate. Okay. Single sign-on, sign -on, like here in Mapua, we, we're implementing that. Uh, we are using this, our email when we connect to Wi-Fi, when we connect to our desktop, uh, when we connect to our micro, to Microsoft services. That's one example of a single sign-on certificate. So I have here a table of the file format I have discussed. So for us to easily compare the characteristics of these different file formats or certificate formats. So again, the format for CER is binary. DER is ASCII. Usually, CR is for binary certificate and DER is for ASCII. PEM is the um, uh, can be used for almost any certificate purpose. Again, we have different format uh, types. Well, because we can implement, we may implement digital certificate in different platforms. So there are platforms that supports a specific file format. Okay. Another, there are specific components in the uh, PKI example like the sharing of the public key its key its file format is uh, .p7b or .p7c while when you are to store private keys with a certificate it's under p12 or a pfx okay that's how it is uh, you've learned in your web okay that once you're done with the website you need to register it with a domain name so how do we know, let's say example, Mapua Edu PH, that indeed the owner okay, um, is legit, okay, and there, uh, no, the, the owner is legit, that's how, okay, okay na yun. So uh, it will undergo this rigorous process, it starts with this domain validation. In the domain validation, it proves the ownership of the particular domain. So what happens in the domain validation, the owner of the website, Okay, in the process of registering the domain name, needs to uh, an email validation is sent to his email. Okay, and the email, let's say the requirement is it should be uh, a registered company name. 
Okay, example, it should have, uh, say, ebblanca.edu.ph. That's one of the requirements. Okay, uh, so that's the domain validation. Actually, domain validation is highly vulnerable to compromise. So this is why uh, domain validation is supported by this extended validation. In the extended validation, this is where the owner of the website will have we really have to pass a thorough and a standard security a standard identity verification process okay in, in not like not just like um, verifying the identity through email okay so with the extended validation uh, with the process it will re indeed prove exclusive rights to use of the domain uh, confirm the legal operational and physical existence and even prove the identity the entity uh, has authorized the issuance of the certificate okay so somehow extended validation is much secured way of uh, validating the ownership of the uh, website uh, a single certificate can be issued into into multiple subdomains okay so there are two 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 ways to do this I may implement through sun or wildcard in a sun it uh, it um Sun is used for multiple domains that have different name, but owned by same organization. Example, Google may use Sun, a subject alternative name, for Google.com and Android.com. So Sun, usually you have different domain names, but the owner of these different domain names is just one. The organization is just one, like say Google. So that's the Sun. Uh, wildcard naman, the wildcard on the other hand, on the other hand, it starts with an asterisk and can be used for multiple domains but each domain must have the same root domain example let's say you may use wildcard okay um so for accounts.google.com and support google.com so these are two domains but um it only has one certificate okay so that's the good thing between the, these two uh one certificate but you have multiple domains okay a uh, certificate I mentioned, it's not only used for a website. You may issue a certificate, a digital certificate to machines, example. to uh, It may be issued to a domain controller or even to a workstation. Maybe yun nga, pag-implement ng mga SSO, single sign-on certificates. Okay. Also, it may be implemented for email, used to sign. Let's say maybe used to uh, sign and encrypt email messages using MIME or PGP. We've discussed PGP in the previous ma module or code signing code signing is a means to uh, verify if the code has not been modified code of an executable app so again code signing is used to validate the authority the authentication of an execu executable app that indeed the code is not being modified and then the last is self sign this is um, issued usually to an organization let's say an organization um, wanted to have its own uh, CA, so it will install its own CA to its, uh, let's say, Active Directory Certificate ser Server for Microsoft. Linux also has uh, modules for installing its own certificate authority. Okay, so we call that as a CA. The good thing with this is like, again, uh, the company may have its own certificate authority, set it up in its own server. Uh, the good thing with this is it eliminates cost. It's much cheaper, okay? Because uh, let's say if you were to subscribe to VeriSign or to Amazon, uh, having a third, a trusted third party is very expensive. I have a student before, uh, where in the company he he works with is has this service, and he said that the company usually pay like millions of pesos for this uh, service, okay? In certificate authority nga. So in the PKI, uh, it has this key management life cycle. It starts with generation of the key. In the key generation, it will identify the cipher, uh, key, the cipher algorithm to use, the bit key, the key length. Okay. Uh, so again, in the key generation, this is where uh, the private public key generation happens. After the key generation is, uh, it will now generate the digital certificate. Okay, again, digital certificates are used to identify the public key and associate, associate that to the owner. So, after that is 
the private keys to be stored securely. Storage na yung susunod. Okay, next thing will happen is the storage. This will ensure that the that authorized unauthorized users will not have any access on these private keys. Very important to secure the private keys. And then, um, usually certificate authority, uh, certificates, digital certificates issued has this validity period. Okay? So, there are instances it may be revoked, especially if it expires or let's say if the key is compromised. Okay? Uh, if it already expires, okay, so it needs to undergo the process of renewal. Okay? So, we call this uh, process as the key management life cycle. So, a key usually again or a key pair is usually uh, randomly generated. Okay, again, there is always a bit key. We've discussed this before. Let's say a 1024 or 2048 bit keys. Usually, these key, these generated keys are expressed in a binary DAR or in the ASCII PEM. Uh, this key, when um, it undergoes that process of generation, generating the keys, uh, it's uh, CPU intensive. That's why uh, enterprise, usually enterprise uh, network. Um, invests on a dedicated hardware like an HSM. HSM stands for Hardware Security Module. It's a dedicated crypto processor. It's designed for the protection of the key management cycle we've discussed before. Like one agenda is to um, protect the key generation. Okay. Um, it, it excels in securing the cryptographic keys uh, provisioning the encryption, decryption, authentication, and digital signing services. So, again, uh, we call that's the agenda of the HSM. I have here a picture of an HSM. I got this from, uh, of course, when I Google about HSM. Okay. Key storage may be implemented by software or hardware. If it's software based, the key is stored on a server, set up on a server, and stored on a server. Uh, and then protect pro, uh, security protection may uh, be done by setting up ACL access control list is discussed before in Cisco you even had set up on ACLs during your Cisco 2 hardware based on the other hand is implemented through HSM like this one I mentioned this a while ago or uh, our smart cards USB media and SIM cards may also uh, store keys inside Okay, inside this platform. Another option is to use TPM. It stands for Trusted Platform Module. It's a chip in a PC or laptop which is used to generate, uh, store, and protect key. Okay, again, we call it as TPM. Very important to ensure that the private keys are managed and well secured. Okay, uh, there, there's this principle in the book, they call it as M of N, uh, for the critical keys to be protected. Okay, so private keys, uh, actually, to be specific, private keys are the, the ones termed as critical keys. So with the, N, with the M of N control, it says here, it only says here about the number of admins, that for an N number of admins permitted to access the system, M must be present for access to be granted. The requirement is that M should be greater than 1 and N should be greater than M. Example, if I have an M of 2 and an N of 4, so let this means, let's say, uh, if I have in my enterprise network for administrators, there should always be 2 present. That's how it is. That's the only thing about M of N. Okay? And then also, due care should be well taken uh, for employees, especially when they leave the business. You know what? I remember I had a student before. Um company hired him and then uh, he is the only administrator uh, there there's actually four of them who were hired okay and when they get when they get into this company there's no old administrators all of them are new so the problem is they don't have no, the password of the the network devices in the organization the good thing is they uh, figure out what the password of the servers are Okay, so that's one agenda. No example, private key. Example, uh, the um, employee may delete the private key of the server, so it's dangerous. Okay, so 
uh, if that's the case, the private key is lost or damaged. Although there's that what we call as a key re recovery process. In the key recovery, this is where a secure uh, this is a secure process of backing up keys or maybe or recovering the data uh, encrypted with the lost key. Okay. Another term to take note is the escrow or key escrow. This is a solution for organizations that don't have the capacity to store keys securely. What they do is to um, pass it on to a trusted third party. Okay, pag secure ng mga uh, keys securely is to uh, pass it in a trusted third party. So there are instances wherein a certificate has been revoked. Okay, so there's that what we call as key revocation. Uh, usually, it happens if the key uh, is being compromised or the certificate authority itself is being compromised another is if the certificate is being expired okay or if there is a cessation of operation okay uh, these are the usual reasons where uh, usually a certificate is being revoked uh, if the key is being expired uh uh, just take note the certificates has this uh, validity period so it requires a, a certificate renewal okay so usually in the certificate renewal it consists of issuing a new certificate and it includes a new key generation so a new key will be generated uh, especially if the old one is no longer considered um, secured maybe uh, there is a uh, well because um, there is a fear that the key is being compromised. So again, in the certificate revocation, usually it happens if the certificate is no longer used, if uh, the details of the certificate has been changed, or if the certificate authority is compromised, or the key is being compromised. Example, the private key is being stolen, or the digital certificate were stolen from the certificate authority these are the usual reasons how I, um, where a certificate is being revoked uh, usually our certificate authority maintains a list of revo revoked certificates okay uh, we call it as certificate revocation, revocation list crl uh, in the crl it has a list of certificates that are no longer valid or have been revoked by the issuer uh, usually uh, this CRL is published 20, uh, periodically, usually every 24 hours. So, uh, this enables uh, users of an issuer certificate to find out whether a certificate is valid or not. Okay. Uh, usually, uh, the CRL, if it is to be forwarded to the, uh, it is to be forwarded uh, to the user, um, the uh, this CRL is digitally signed by the certificate authority. This is to prevent uh, DOS and spoofing attacks. So again, CRL is it contains the list of certificates and usually uh, information included in the CRL serial numbers that have been revoked. Uh, CAs usually maintain an online CRL and queried and usually can be queried by entering the certificate serial number. Local computers receives updates on the certificate uh, status uh, and also maintains a local CRL. Okay. I have here uh, a CRL example in Microsoft. Also, I have one here in this uh, part of the slide. Another means of uh, knowing the revoked certificates is OCSP. OCSP stands for Online Certificate Status Protocol. The one that uses these are usually browsers. So a browser will send a request to the certificate authority uh, which is uh, in this process known as OCSP responder so this is one role that the CA has when it comes to and this one when it comes to revoke certificates so browser will query to the CA hey um, can I uh, find out if this certificate information is revoked if it is still valid or not so CA will check its CRL its certificate revocation lists to uh, check if it is valid or not okay or if it is revoked so it will send a response to the browser to the client okay so OCSP responder again provides immediate revocation information uh, on that one specific certificate so problem with the OCSP okay the one that I discussed a while ago it um, 
puts on too much load on the OCSP responder, on the certificate authority. Take note, there's lots of certificates that the CA has. And uh, especially the, C CR, the, the revoked certificate. So it's a tedious process to, to respond to all queries sent by the browsers if a certificate is still valid or not. So, um, the OCSP process was improved. They came up with this OCSP stapling. In the OCSP stapling, the one that will respond, uh, the, what will happen is um, the uh, status of the certificate, if it is revoked or if it is valid or not, is to be timestamped. It no, not not timestamp. It will be. It is to be stamped, stapled. Okay. Status is to be stapled and then sent to the server. Okay. So if in any case a browser will uh, request um, for the status of the certificate, uh, it will never be sent anymore to the OCSP responder to the client to the CA. No, uh, it will now be sent to the server. The server will have to be will have to respond on the status of this certificate. I have a diagram. So I have here a diagram of the OCSP stapling sample the browser wanted to connect to the server the server will query the OCSP responder it is now the server that will query the OSP, OCSP responder and not the client the web browser if you notice the OCSP responder will timestamp the uh, approval send back to the server the server will have to reply okay so every time the browser will um, uh, check the validity the one that will respond is not now the is not the CA but the web server so that's how uh, OCSP stapling works uh, and then the last of the slide is PKA um, PKA uses a trust model in the trust model it, it shows trust relationship which is very important in the PKI infra in the PKI infrastructure uh, of it shows the trust relationship of each components like in this case the CA certificate authority imagine if you only have single CA so there's a single point of failure, right? That's a problem with only have uh, will will that's a problem with having a single component, okay? So if the CA is compromised and there's only one CA, then uh, example with the internet, um, it will collapse, right? Security infrastructure will collapse. So that's why they came up with the hierarchical structure. In the hierarchical structure of the PKI trust model, we have we don't have only one CA, but we have more. So there's that root CA, that's the mother of all CAs. All, uh, all digital certificates are in the root CA. And then uh, these certificates in the root CA are distributed in this intermediate CA. Okay, let's say 1,000 certificates issued are in this in intermediate CA1. 2,000 in this two uh, intermediate CA2 and then 3,000 in here. Okay, so in case, and then what happens is this root CA now can become offline. Offline na siya. So, in a way, it can never be compromised by if it's offline. Offline. So, the only online CAs are these intermediate CAs here. If in case this is compromised, okay, so it needs to be restored and then um, oh, the root CA serves as a backup. So, those Certificates issued here definitely root CA has a copy of that and have to undergo a uh, recovery process. Okay, that's how it is. We call this as the PKI, PKI trust model. And uh, this ends uh, the English translation, English discussion of this module 5. Keep safe, together we learn as one.